Hello everyone, I've got a review for you today of four brand new test scents from Bath & Body Works White Barn Candle Company. These just recently hit test stores sort of unannounced. Um, they don't currently have any marketing or a collection name to go with them, so we sort of were surprised by their entrance. Um, there may be two additional uh, scents added to the line at some point, but we're really not sure uh, as far as sort of their purpose or what they're planning, you know, what they're trying to go for with them or if and when they would go wide. Um, it's, you know, there's really not much known at this point. Um, when we first heard the names of them, uh, a couple of us thought that maybe it was a revamp or reboot of the Forest Collection, which was a Slatkin & Co. test collection last fall. Um, it included um, candles like Moss and Cedar Flower, Enchanted Woods, Red Oak Tree, Wild Vetiver, Woodland Herbs, Dark Berries and Bark, uh, and also Black Forest Woods. So when you see these, Sage and Cedar, Oak, Moss and Vetiver, uh, you know, White Water and Birch, Sandwood Citrus, um, you know, it, it sounds like it would be sort of similar fragrances. Uh, however, that's not the case at all. Um, it seems that, uh, well, as you can see, first of all, they are part of the, you know, White Barn Gold Lid Collection. Uh, now, generally, they, you know, the lines, be the, the line between the two lines or collections is kind of blurry. Um, it's not always clear why something falls in, you know, the Gold Lid White Barn or the standard Silver Lid uh, Bath & Body Works, formerly Slacken & Co. collection. Uh, and sometimes scents will appear in both uh, collections, you know, for no, no good reason, really. Um, but generally, their, their marketing uh, seems to push the the gold lids towards more of a either they call it sometimes sometimes their heritage collection, um, their classic collection, um, a little more uh, sometimes warm or homey or sort of higher end sort of conceptual blends or scents. Um, so while you might get like a you know cranberry cider that's a kind of true to life smells like cranberry cider scent in the um, Bath & Body Works sil silver lid line, you'd get something like Cranberry Woods um, in the White Barn Gold Lid collection that's more of a conceptual scent that doesn't smell like cranberries and woods put together. It's more um, evoking a, you know, a, a certain feeling or mood or thought or you know, something like that. Um, and it, it, that is what I'm seeing with these ones. So while you know, the Forest Collection was very true to life in many ways where um, you could smell you know, oak tree and red oak tree, and you could smell really like, you know, slate and mossy notes in some of them, um, and true vetiver and wild vetiver. It was, while that was more like a walk through the forest, um, these are more using those similar notes, um, but in specific unique blends that are more just, I hate to use the, the term cologne or, or, you know, cologne-like, um, but they're more about a unique blended fragrance um, for the home. The same way that you know, um, perfumes and colognes, uh, you know, body fragrances are generally um, unique blends of, you know, a common collection of notes, um, but a unique blend that just hits a certain, um, you know, a certain scent when it's all sort of put together, whereas um, the, the, the forest collection was a little bit more towards um, true to life or authentic sense. Um, and so I think sort of across the board, they go with things that are more like that here. So this is not, you know, oak moss and vetiver, just, you know, two, two handfuls of uh, moss and, you know, the vetiver roots. Uh, it's more a unique freight blend uh, that probably has more complexities than they really let on to um, that they are just in this um, uh, sort of incarnation of these um, they're calling the blends by the the names that are in them. So they could have called these, you know, the way that we had sweater weather in the fall that happened to be juniper and eucalyptus. Um, that could have been called, you know, eucalyptus juniper berries, but they used, you know, more of the, the feeling sweater weather for it. Um, and it was a very unique blend that was sort of it, its own thing that stood on its own. So that's more what I feel like they're going for with these, something that's not as true to life that maybe they think is a little bit more... Um, uh, not so much generic, but just more acceptable to, to most people's noses that that's something they would want in their home. They might not want their home smelling like a forest, um, but if it's a unique blend that is a little bit more towards um, what you find in, um, you know, true perfumes and, and, and body care fragrance, or body fragrances as opposed to just home fragrances, um, you know, maybe more folks would, would feel that they're, they're appropriate for their home. So that's, I think, what they're going for here. So a little bit of a letdown for, for me in that sense because I really love the Forest Collection and was... Excited to see sort of uh, a revamp of that, or I've always wanted them to do a spa line or something truly, um, a really nice mix of herbals and fresh and, um, 
you know, just really sort of interesting and complex um, fragrances between heavy and woodsy and, you know, the, the, you know, oriental spice sort of area. And then you get into uh, the green notes and, and things like that, maybe some floral thrown in. So I've, I've always wanted that. Um, and this unfortunately doesn't hit the mark for that, but it's still interesting. So I don't love any of these. I don't hate them. I think they're interesting for what they are. Um, but let's just dive right into them. Now, um, like I've done with other videos in the past where they are giving us you know, not a lot to go on as far as just saying a couple of notes that, you know, folks may not know what oak moss is supposed to smell like or what birch smells like. Um, what I've done is a little research, nothing too in-depth here, um, on what those notes generally smell like. Um, so just, I'll give a little background on, um, you know, what they're sort of going for here as far as the, you know, someone from the fragrance world would look at these. So first up is oak moss and vetiver. And let's just, I will it up here and get a little close up on us. Um, oak moss and vetiver. Now the label, I don't think this is oak moss or vetiver. Um, it seems to be, I, I can't really tell, like just a bowl of microgreens or like little purple leaves or something like that. Now oak moss, I actually have um, an image of it here on my phone. Let me show you that while I've, I've got this up here. So oak moss, it looks like what you expect moss to look like. So, you know, as it grows on trees, just like that spongy sort of dry, green kind of fungus. Um, now, oak moss and vetiver here. So, you've got oak moss and vetiver. The notes on the bottom read as, infuse your home with a luxurious blend of oak moss, vetiver, and lavender. Um, so again, just by looking at the blurb here on the bottom, we can see they're not saying, inspired by a walk for the forest, they're saying infuse your home with a luxurious blend. So it's more about, you know, see if you like this sort of unique blend of notes, um, and just you know, use them in your home. So a little bit more direct in that sense. Now, um, again, so the, the marketing, the, the image here, I don't think they're trying to go for true to life. It's, I'm not sure what that is, but I don't think it's oak moss, vetiver, or lavender. Um, now, everyone knows sort of what lavender smells like. I, I talked about it a bit in the Villa Bergamot video, uh, and then of course my All About Lavender video from way back. Um, you know, so I'm not gonna really get into what lavender smells like, because I think everyone knows at this point. Vetiver. Uh, similarly, vetiver a lot of folks know about. I talked a lot about it in the original Forest Collection video. Um, I really love it. It's in many, many men's fragrances. Uh, it's actually a root. Uh, it's a grass. Well, to start, it's a grass, and then um, the fragrance comes from the roots, and it it's very um, sort of damp, heavy, earthy. Um, there's a subtle bit of citrus to it, a little bit of a green, a heavy green to it, um, but it's very woodsy, intense, um, a little leathery, kind of uh, reminiscent of amber in some ways, um, but really, really nice. Um, I, I love vetiver in a lot of things. And then oak moss, uh, the image that you, you just saw, is considered to be woody, sharp, slightly sensual or sweet, um, but also kind of inky, um, also called one of the forest floor notes. Um, it's considered to be forest-like, rich, earthy, um, with a natural damp and creamy softness to it. And they say it mixes well with florals and green notes. So the, the heavy green note of vetiver, um, I suppose, can go well with the oak moss. Um, so that's what that is. Now sniffing it, I'll start with the lid here. I don't really get, again, I don't know exactly what oak moss smells like on its own. I do get some woodiness some sweetness, absolutely some sweetness. I don't really get much woodiness from it at all, um, even from the vetiver. I don't get as much vetiver in this as I did in wild vetiver, um, or really in any vetiver scent I've smelled before. It's, I suppose it's there, um, but this is more green, a little powdery, a little bit of heaviness to it, but not, you know, sort of the, the earthy dampness, but not a, a dirtiness. So. Maybe some of the moss, you know, like, like a damp mossiness without it being um, like, you know, dirty leaves or, you know, fallen leaves on the floor of a forest or something. Um, now, there is a definite freshness to this, and I'm not sure, I suppose some of that's coming from the lavender. I'm actually, I'm, I'm sniffing also uh, back here behind the scenes, uh, the Vila Bergamot candle, because that was also heavy in the lavender in a different way. Um, and there are actually some similarities between these two. Um, I, I, the Vila Bergamot is, is different. It's not, it's not as powdery or as intense as the oak moss, which I think the, the oak moss probably brings some bit of a, a powder to it with the, the sensualness, the sensuality that it, that it brings. 
Um, but what I'm getting from this the most actually is um, it smells a lot like, and again, this is, is harking back to the, the men's cologne um, comparisons that I think most folks will have to these four scents. Um, I'm getting a bit of, it smells like a certain um, shaving cream, and I'm not sure the brand, but sort of one of the cheap drugstore, like old school shaving creams that comes in an aerosol can. Um, uh, I know that, I, I want to say Neutrogena, I know it's not Neutrogena, but there's Barbasol, um, there are a few brands that do them, it's just like the green or red labels, um, sort of a, a, a short squat can of shaving cream, not the gel or any of the, the newer, you know, the fancy ones, but just the old school white foam shaving cream. Um, so to me, that's what I get a lot from this. Um, not so much because it is, you know, a bath fragrance or a, a shaving sort of lightness to it, but it, it reminds me of going into... Like stepping into a bathroom after a hot shower and smelling that sort of shaving cream. So that's, it's hard for me to get past that with this. But I suppose it does make it somewhat fresh. This is probably, this may be the freshest. Sorry, I know we're a little blurry there. Um, might be the freshest of the four. I'm going to have to go back and forth, I think, between smelling all four of them. I do like it a lot. It's, um, it's unique. It doesn't smell like really anything else they've done before. Um... Not sure if that's the best name for it or a really image, if, that, if they wanted to go with this blend, but uh, nevertheless, it certainly is interesting. So, um, moving on to white water birch. And so this, they're just showing us birch trees, um, fallen logs. It actually reminds me a little bit of the fireside uh, candle, uh, as far as the, the image. Uh, and then the notes on this one, they don't really give us much, unfortunately. It just says, brighten up your home with a fresh, clean blend of marine notes, woods, and just a bit of citrus. So they're saying it's fresh and clean. Okay, that's fine. Um, marine notes doesn't tell us much. I suppose they mean water. Um, woods, they're not giving us much there other than we know it has birch. And then just a bit of citrus. They're not telling us what type of citrus, whether it's a blossom, juice, peel, what. Um... Now, I will say, based on what I've done for my little research here on birch, um, the only thing I really have gotten from this is that usually birch actually will smell a bit like wintergreen. Um, it, it'll come out like a wintergreen scent. Um, you know, birch beer, which is similar to root beer, it has sort of that um, kind of, yeah, the, the minty edge to it, um, as well as it, it can also come off sometimes leathery. Um, but it's generally looked at as a lighter, as far as the woods go, it's a, a lighter wood. Um, I almost think that, that, you know, the white, it could be white birch in water, but white water birch, I suppose, sounded better. Um, now, smelling it, it is um, probably the freshest, the cleanest of all four of them. It might be my favorite, I don't know. Um, I do get a bit of sort of a sweet water, um, I don't, white water, whatever that means, marine, it's not, it's not marine in an oceany sort of way. This isn't a summery scent. It's not a bright scent. It doesn't have any sort of the ocean or sea to Santorini or anything along those lines. Um, I suppose there's a bit of a wood to it. Again, birch is a kind of lighter as far as woods go. But I, I suppose there's a bit of, yeah, I don't know, some sort of a, a light wood to it. Very light. And the citrus, I'm really not sure. Um, this is a tough one to, to describe. It's a little sweet. I would say it, it, it could be, actually it could be a little bit of bergamot maybe. I don't think it's a neruli. And it's certainly not, you know, you can't pick it out as really citrus. Not really like, oh, it's grapefruit or lemon or lime or anything along those lines. You know, tangerine, nothing juicy. Just a little bit of a clean... A little bit of a clean, perhaps a bergamot in there. Not really sure. It, it smells a little bit, um, you know, they say fresh and clean. I could go a little towards like maybe like a, a heavily scented bathroom cleaner with this. It is a little bit, but there's a little too much wood in there for it to be a cleaner scent. But definitely a, a, a kind of heavy, fresh, bright fragrance. And then moving on to sage and cedar. I was assuming sage and cedar would be my favorite um, just because I love sort of all things sage. Um, and cedar, I generally like it. I don't want it to be, you know, cedar chips that you put in with, um, you know, hamsters or something like that. Um, although I, I think officially they, you're not supposed to use cedar for them because 
uh, it releases some sort of toxin. But, um, you know, everyone knows what a cedar chest smells like or cedar chips for, uh, you know, keeping moths away or something like that for, for, you know, wool sweaters in the winter or something like that. Or in the summer, rather, when you put them away. Um, but that's not what this is. Um, interestingly enough, it's kind of funny. There are two labels on this. I guess the machine, I don't know how or why, but there are two complete labels on this. Um, so sage and cedar. This one's a little bit strange. The label is a little strange for me. Um, it's just a, a wood background, and then what appears to be almost like acorns or buckeyes, like a nut or something, like hazelnuts. Um, it's not... It's nothing that I looked up actually what cedar seeds look like, and it's uh, not the seed from a cedar tree and certainly not sage. So I think it's again just unrelated and they kind of like the image. Um, I like a little bit more true to life, or you know, I like to see what we're supposed to be smelling. So kind of a thumbs down in that direction. Um, and the notes on this one uh, experience an exotic and rich blend of sage, cedar, and rare tonka bean. So they're going this way. They're saying this one's a little bit out there, I suppose, for, for our noses. Um, but uh, sage, we all know um, essentially what that smells like. But just, you know, it's generally a savory aromatic, kind of hazy, soft. Sometimes it'll come off a little mildly peppery, um, but certainly still a green herbal, um, but very much towards the savory side as opposed to a bright green freshness of herbal. Um, cedar, again, most people know that. Uh, it's sort of a somber, spicy, very resinous um, wood, uh, kind of, but yet not a smoky wood, kind of still a clean, what, what actually in my research they refer to as a balsamic um, edge to it. Um, so cedar is very much to me like a red um, scent in wood, um, not a heavy, dark, you know, burning woods sort of scent, but just a, a very bright kind of um, almost like a stringent as far as woods go when it when it hits your nose. Um, oh, and then finally, sorry, tonka bean. Tonka bean has been in many of their fragrances across the board um, throughout the years, and I, none of us have really ever, at least I, speaking for myself, have never exactly known what it, what it is. Um, the, the image there, that is not tonka beans. I, I checked that as well. Um, it's generally considered to be vanilla-like. Um, sometimes can come off a little bit cinnamon, a little saffron, a little almond, a little cloves. Um, so maybe a little spicier than just a standard vanilla bean. Um, it can be powdery, sweet. Uh, it's in the oriental category as far as fragrance notes go. Um, and it's a powdery, sweet, they, they call it balmy, a uh, warm um, gourmand. Uh, there are also some buzzwords that came up for that. So um, thinking of, you know, something, a, a warm, rich, a richer, warm, Vanilla, essentially, and sniffing it. I, I do like this one. The more I smell it, the more I like it. It's actually, originally when I smelled these, it was my least favorite, but I keep going back and forth. It's sort of every time I smell them, depending on my mood, I like one more than the other, or less than the other. Now, <clears throat> this one's tough because I was hoping for more of a true sage, and there's really not a true sage. And strangely enough, I feel like the, the best interpretation, interpretation of sage um, it's actually in an old test candle, lavender macaroon, um, which should have been macaron, but it was lavender macaroon or, or um, uh, lavender caramel, it was also called. Um, and it was a test scent from um, 2011, um, fall into summer. And, I'm sorry, summer into the fall, the autumn collection, and I loved it. Um, if you remember, uh, Karen sent my way and I did... Um, I think we may have done a, a group review of that on her channel at the time, and she said it smelled like stovetop stuffing, um, mainly due to that, um, you know, the lavender mixing with a heavy, heavy sage note. Um, and I love the sage in that. This, I don't really get a true sage. It's not heavy on the cedar, though, so I suppose this, there may be sage in it that's kind of bringing the cedar a little lighter. They call it exotic. I'm not sure why. I think just probably because they you know, have tonka bean in there, which they, they think no one will understand what it is. Um, let me get some of the actual candle. This one's a little lighter than I remembered. Uh, there is cedar in there, but it's not heavy, which I'm glad. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want it to be heavy on the cedar, but I do think I, I can smell a true cedar in there, um, but it's light, which is nice. Um, the tonka bean, I suppose, is just, it's really not a, I don't get a sweetness or a vanilla, and certainly no gourmand, there's no real spiciness to it. A little bit of, I suppose, powdery sweet, because you're not getting sweetness from either the cedar or the sage. Um, 
So I'm gonna say the tonka bean, I, I suppose, sweetens it up a bit. Maybe a little powdery, uh, a little bit of the greenness from the sage, but again, it's it's the, the part of sage that is more towards the the hazy, soft, mildly peppery, I would say. Yeah, a little bit of a peppery to this. In the way that black pepper bergamot has pepper, it's not, you know, it's not a real pepper in your, you know, hitting you in the nose gonna make you sneeze scent. It's just a little bit of a, a spicy kick to it. So, again, I could kind of take it or leave it, which bummed me out because, again, I really do love true sage and cedar I don't have a problem with. Um, but, again, it didn't really impress me. And the final one here, sandalwood citrus. Again, we're seeing sort of a, a let's get focused, uh, a sort of aged wood there in the background, a burnt leaf. I don't know if that's from the sandalwood tree. Not really sure. It looks like there's a piece of cotton there. Um, again, I think they're just going for an emotion that this is going to be sort of a heavier, a fresh, but a burnt, fresh scent. Um, the notes on it read, discover a new take on citrus in a blend of grapefruit, lemon peel, and sandalwood wrapped in warm musk. So we're going for something that's going to be kind of sweet and fresh with grapefruit and lemon peel, but not juicy. Grapefruit is, you know, leans towards bitter, and lemon peel is, you know, kind of an intense, um, you know, well, I mean, we all know what lemon peel smells like, but it's not the, the juicy sweet citrus or bright citrus. It's a little bit more of a darker citrus uh, tone. Of course, sandalwood uh, and then more musk. So just um, the, I think most folks know sandalwood, and it's kind of a love or hate scent. I think most people lean towards hate almost. I think they don't like when sandalwood is thrown in things. Um, it's considered oriental, woody, um, milky, soft, sturdy, rich. Um, another thing that was mentioned having like a balsamic edge to it. Um, it does have, they say, green notes on top, so it's not all a true heavy wood. Um, it's somewhat sweet, and it's one of the delicate wood notes. So, um, and even really when most folks think sandalwood, they're not thinking of woodsy or forest. They're thinking um, sort of warm and musky and just sort of a little heavier, almost sometimes even cloying or powdery. Um, but it's sort of bright and fresh uh, version of woods. And then musk can be anything across the board. Um, you know, way, way, way back when, you know, you, you know, probably a hundred years ago, musk was of course derived from animal glands, basically. Um, but of course now they're they're primarily from um, um, flowers, florals, and um, synthetic. You know, quite honestly, for the most part. Um, but it's generally sweet, creamy. Usually brings something powdery, rich, heavy. Um, if it's a white musk, it can be a little bit lighter in its intensity, more towards powdery. If it's a heavy musk. Um, it can be, you know, heavier and lower, more to, more of a spicy, leathery, warm amber. Um, in my mind, musk sort of, you know, you always wraps the fragrances together, so the notes. So if you've got something with musk in it, and also I feel with sandalwood, um, you kind of have, um, again, this is a weird image, but the thing that pops in my head is, as far as the images of it, um, sometimes when I'm thinking fragrances, I, I get either like colors or images in my mind. Um, almost you think of like a, a, a birthday cake where you've got like the, the, the sandalwood or the musk, the base note is like the base thing that, that is, you know, when you smell it, you're always going to smell that. And then you just have like the candles like stuck in there in the top, which are, you know, the, the citrus notes on that. So when I think of a, a um, fragrance that has heavy notes of a warm musk, whether it's a, a musk, warm musk, white musk, whatever, um, and then you throw... Uh, sandalwood in it, that's much more the, the base, that no matter how you sniff it, you're always going to get that, and then with a few other things thrown in on top of it, like the candles on the cake, um, are sort of the lemon or grapefruit in this. At least that's what I'm expecting. Uh, smell just the lid. Oh man, I don't, I don't really like it. Now, when I first sniffed it, I thought a bit about, this actually reminds me somewhat of Verbena Waters, um, and also reminds me of I think it's Lakeside from uh, the Lakeside collection. I always, I, you know, can't remember Dockside, Lakeside between the two of them, which is which, but I'm pretty sure that Lakeside was the Rubina Waters essentially duplicate. Uh, and Rubina Waters, I think, did have a little bit of sandalwood in it, and of course it did have citrus, um, but also much more watery, heavy on the green um, herbal notes. Um, so this isn't that, but it's in the family, like a variation, a sort of far off variation on, on, the, on the blend. Um, but it is very heavy on sandalwood. 
very heavy on the, the warm musk. So it's not like a deep leathery, spicy musk. It's just very creamy, rich, kind of heavy. Like if this isn't something I want to burn in the summer. It's, it's, you know, it's a little bit intense in, in a, in a strange sort of suffocating way. Um, the citrus is there cause it's not just a sandalwood candle. It's not that deep. It's definitely got a brightness to it that pulls it out from the depths of being just that deep bass note. But I can't really pick them out. I don't, if you, if I didn't see grapefruit or lemon peel on there, I wouldn't really know what it, which one it was or of any of them. <clears throat> so it's there, but I don't really like it. Um, Again, think of Rubina Waters with a lot more of a woodsy warmth to it, which is not really what you want when you think of something like that. And this this one, really almost any of these, but specifically this one, um, sort of remind me somewhat of the blends that are in um, the Lakeside collection, um, specifically like the Dockside and the Lakeside. Not so much the Boathouse Row or... Um, and certainly not Mahogany Teakwood, and not really even Forest Trail, but more like the Dockside Lakeside ones. They were sort of a mix of a little bit of a, you know, there was some water, there were some greens, there was some woodsiness to it, a little bit of strange things going on there. Um, and that's what these remind me of. So I would say, uh, across the board, I would say Sandwood Citrus is my least favorite. Let me take a quick, sorry, I'm reaching over here. Sage and Cedar, Whitewater and Birch. That's, that's pretty nice. And oak moss and vetiver. I would say oak moss and vetiver may be my favorite. I wish it didn't remind me of shaving cream as much as it does. Um, but it's probably my favorite just on its own. Followed by whitewater birch. It, it, yeah, it seems vaguely familiar. These aren't like anything that are like blow you away. I do like it. Um, that's probably my second favorite. Followed by sage and cedar, which when I first sniffed it, I'm remembering now. I thought a little bit of like the um, flirt Paris Daydream, but I think that's probably just from this the type of sage that they use in there. So certainly nothing like there, but um, more like a, a, a nighttime deeper version of something in that direction. So overall, sort of a strange collection. Um, and it's going on a long video here. I, I know I went on a bit here. Um, don't love it, don't hate it. I don't know that I would purchase any more than just a single one of each of these. Maybe the Whitewater Birch, Oak Moss and Vetiver I like, but it's kind of like between, you know, everything else we have, there's really nothing that sticks out to me as a must-have that's super unique. Um, they're nice, but they're a little, a little bit generic in that um, I'm not sure how much thought really went into them. It kind of seems like something you could find anywhere in a way. Like, you know, if you were in, in a, a mass chain, you could find similar scents and they wouldn't be... Um, you know, looked at as particularly high-end or anything really um, must-have or unique. So overall, uh, a bit of a miss for me, not loving it. Um, but we'll see what the collection brings, The other, if there are other ones added to it. I would, If these do go wide, I don't think it would be a big major uh, release with tons of marketing. I think it would just be something that would appear on the shelves the way that, um, you know, Vanilla Coconut was added to this collection. Um, the Japanese cherry blossom was added to the white barn collection. I think they would just sort of be there once we reach more of the summer scents and, and maybe even into fall. Um, just a sort of like the seasonal white barn core collection. So um, take it or leave it is what it is. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, hit me up. And until next time, take care.